You're looking pretty glum there, Sam. What's up? I really messed up with my friend Tommy at school today. How come? Tommy was trying to tell me something that really upset him. And I just kept on talking about my new bike. I wasn't trying to ignore him, but you know how I can get when I'm on a roll. I didn't know that he was getting frustrated with me. Tommy said that I was a bad friend and only cared about myself and stomped off. That's tough. Have you tried to talk to him since? I want to, but I don't know what to say. How do I explain that sometimes my ADHD brain just takes over, even when I don't want it to? I know what you mean. When something enters us, sometimes we tune out everything else around us. But it's hard for people without ADHD to understand that our brains work differently. Sometimes when one of my friends is talking to me, my mind just wanders off. I even butt in and start talking about something I find more interesting. I think it bothers them because they don't talk to me much anymore. I've noticed that you've not had many friends over, except for Tommy. That's why I can't lose Tommy as my friend. He's my best friend. My only friend. The other kids at school have been kind of mean lately. They say I'm weird and call me a baby because I'm too silly and still get really upset about stupid things. They don't want to play with me at recess or be in a group with me. How long has this been happening? Since last year, just before summer. Aw, oh, Sam, why didn't you tell us? Well, you know, Dad, I am kind of weird sometimes. I get real frustrated when I have to wait in line or can't do what I want. And remember when I got into trouble two times last year for that impulse thing that I have? You mean when you're impulsive and don't stop to think before you're doing something? That's it. Remember when I pushed Melissa out of the way and called her a bad name when I was running to the bus and Principal Smith made me apologize? And then a while later, I got upset when I struck out in baseball and threw the bat. All the kids found out about it and stay away from me now. Hmm, you've been getting better at stopping and thinking, but I can tell when you get really frustrated or mad, it's still tough for you. You know, Sam, when I was a kid, I had the same problem, and once in a while, I still get overwhelmed with things and I need to apologize. I really try, Dad. But sometimes I get so angry that I think my head is going to explode, just like a volcano. I think it's time you go see my friend Dr. Murray. She's a psychologist. She sure helped me a lot when I found out about my ADHD. Can she change my brain and take the ADHD away? <laughs> no, no one can do that and we don't want to do that. ADHD is part of you and we love you just the way you are. But we can help make it easier for you. But how can you do that? You'd be surprised. Dr. Murray taught me how to recognize when I was becoming frustrated or angry. She taught me how to do things like breathing exercises or physical things to get rid of some of that pressure that makes you feel like you're going to explode. Is that why you go for a run when you get home? Sure is. It helps me get rid of my stress from work so I can be calmer with you guys in the evening. But what can I do at school? That's when it gets me into the most trouble. Maybe we could talk to your teacher and the principal. You know, I had some trouble with this sort of thing at work a long time ago, and it helped to talk to my boss. What could he do? Well, after he and I talked, he was able to understand my brain a bit better. I also talked to everyone at work and explained that I don't mean to be rude and butt in when they're talking or pick up on their signals. Signals? Yeah. People give other people signals about how they're feeling. They smile when they're happy or they frown and scrunch up their face when they're frustrated or angry. Sometimes they cross their arms when they want you to go away or lean towards you when they're interested in what you were saying. I don't think I notice those things much. Sometimes my teacher, Miss Moretti, stares at me kind of strange when I'm talking in class. It makes me think that I missed something. She was probably trying to let you know with the look on her face that you were doing something wrong. People with ADHD are not usually too good at picking up on those kinds of signals.
Let's talk to Dr. Murray about the things that might help at school. But first, we're going to call Tommy's mom to see if we can go over and you can tell him that you're sorry about what happened earlier today. So Sam, your mom and I spoke to the school about some of the things that Dr. Murray suggested, and they agreed to help. I don't know about that, Dad. I don't want the kids to think that I'm even weirder than they already do. I think we have a solution for that. Dr. Murray is going to come to your school and show everyone a video on ADHD and answer questions. Oh no! They'll think that I'm a real loser! Sam, do you think your friend Tommy is a loser because he wears glasses? Or that Samantha in your class who uses a wheelchair is a loser? Of course not. They can't help it. And Tommy is such a good soccer player. And you should see Samantha's art projects. Well, you're great at math and a good athlete. People can't be good at everything. You're not great at making your attention do what you want, staying still or slowing down your mind to think about what you're going to do or say. But that's okay. I guess so. But how can the school help? Well, the school is going to find you a quiet spot all your own where you can go and calm yourself down when you get frustrated or angry. They're going to let you have movement breaks and fidget toys to help get out some of that extra energy. Plus, your mom and I, with your teacher, are going to help you learn and practice picking up on those special signals that people send. There are a lot of other things we can try, too. Okay, I'll try. I'm just really glad that Tommy's still my friend. He understands now that my ADHD also makes it more difficult for me to stay calm and pick up the signals that he's trying to send me. Tommy and I even came up with a special signal, all of our own, for when I'm not paying attention to him. He just punches me in the arm, but not too hard. 